What's up boys, Callstar and Grammy here. And in a recent video of mine, I talked about the Briefing Room app and broke down how to utilize it, what it is, what it can do for you, and how to start with the quick generator for a quick mission to get in, have some fun, mix up some stuff, get some variety and some missions. And I wanna dive deeper in this video to cover the campaign generator side of it. And it's also kind of loosely connected to the full generator in that a lot of the options we're gonna go through um, uh, mirror each other. So we're just gonna cover the campaign generator here, kind of how to go through it, how to set it up, and what kind of an experience it will give you for a more full-fledged you know campaign experience so we're jumping straight into it here uh this is the web version of it i'll link to it down below it's free to use and it's a great re resource so i highly recommend throwing them a couple bucks to support what they're doing here because this is a great tool for those of us in the dcs community now we're going to start off here with the context and environment a lot of this stuff we're going to breeze through pretty self-explanatory coalitions your theater this is gonna be the first option where do you want to uh, have this campaign take place at uh you can pick wherever you want and whatever maps you may have uh for this one i'm just gonna uh, i'll go to sanai we'll click sanai now the situation uh because this is specific to the theater that you select um, it's going to pull up and reenact or at least attempt to reenact uh, the scenarios that happen in this theater. So as we talk about Sinai, when we click the drop down, we're going to see here we have quite a few options. We can uh, do the six day war, day zero, day six, war over Sinai, uh, operations over Gaza, uh, Israeli Sinai occupation. So it, it, it gives you real situations that have taken place in this theater. If we switch out and go to, uh, say, the Caucasus. Uh, we're going to see now that there's a variety of things here that have took in place in this theater. So if you want something that's more situational, you can select that or select uh, random. Um, we'll go back here to Sinai. Uh, I'm going to leave it random. I'm going to let it choose whatever it wants to give me. I'm not really complaining here. Uh, home air base, you can select something specific if you want or leave it to random. I really encourage just allowing for the generator to do as much of the work as it can for you. Um, so I would leave that at random. Uh, and then the airbase variation distance, we'll leave it at average here. So you can make changes with that time period. This is going to be an important one. You know, what time period do you want this all to take place? If you're really trying to reenact specific time periods and battles, well then, you know, pick the arrow. We'll click the eighties for this one. Uh, of course you'll pick, you'll, you'll pick your side. In this case, I'll pick uh, blue four, uh, down here. We get our first chance, unlike the quick generator, to actually select the conditions that we're going to be uh, flying in. So here for our bad weather chance, you can select something like low or average. I'll leave it at average. I want more of a realistic experience. So, hey, if it gives me rain and, and clouds at 2,000 feet off the deck, it's it's going to be uh, it's going to be a bit of a shit show. But it should be inter interesting, you know. Uh, here for your night mission chance again. I enjoy night missions. They don't make for the best uh, videos for DCS on YouTube because it's just hard to see everything. But when I'm flying myself, I do enjoy them. So I'll leave it at average as well. Next, we'll tab over to flight groups. This is where we're going to select our aircraft. Um, here, we're going to go ahead and whatever aircraft you're going to fly in, we'll just select one. I'm just going to pick the Harrier right here for this example. Uh, the count here is me solo. So we're going to put that to one. If you were going to take this and run it in a multiplayer server, that you create uh, for some buddies, well, then you would uh, select however many aircraft uh, there would be that you would all uh, fly, all right? Payload, again, if you're not familiar with the payload, what this does by having it an auto is that it allows the generator, based on the mission that it sets up, to auto-select the payload best suited for completing that uh, mission or that task. I leave it at auto. However, if you want something very specific, you can go through and select something that you want. Uh, I think the other great thing about having an auto is that many of us tend to run with the same armament in every aircraft. Uh, we get into like that routine and I think it's interesting and uh, keeps you on your toes when you have to use armament that you don't normally use. You have to remember how to use it and get good at it. So leave it at auto, give yourself a challenge, see what the generator gives you for that mission and go from there. You know, you can always change it when you're in the aircraft as well. So keep that in mind. Um, here we'll select where you want to start on the runway, parking cold, hot. I like this a lot because I don't have to cold start every time. 
I'm parking hot. I'm ready to go. Ready to get in there and just straight into the action. Um, you get to pick where you want to start from here. Again, you can be very specific in this or leave it for the generator to select. So again, I encourage, you know, allowing the generator to generate these things and just, you know, as much as possible. Uh, Livery, we'll leave it at auto. Country, we'll just put combined uh, JTF blue. Uh, you can also select if you want a wingman or not. And the other thing too, is that if you're going to have like, let's say you have like a couple of your buddies, you got like three of your friends, you have one's going to be your wingman. So like, let's say we'll bump this up to two count for two carriers. But let's say you have two buddies, other buddies are going to fly with you. You can hit the plus tab here. We're going to create a second flight group here. Now, let's say that these two friends are going to be our cap while we're going in to do the other stuff. So we'll just select, uh, uh, you know, we'll just pick the Eurofighter here for this example. We'll select the count for two so they can both fly in it. And we'll do the same thing. Payload, we'll leave it at auto. We'll have them start on the runway. Um, hot. Uh, same, same, you know, parameters that we selected for the Harriers. We'll select it for this aircraft here. The other thing about this is now you have a new option. Unlike the first one, which is for us, you can select this to be a hostile unit as well. So you can really start injecting specific aircraft in here that you want to go against. So if you do want to hone your skills against a certain aircraft and the AI, um, you can do that or you can leave it unchecked here. And then this would be some, uh, these would be units that uh, two of your friends can uh, jump into and fly. Um, dynamic spawning. Again, I really don't touch this as much. So I'm not really too familiar with what this does. We'll skip along here. Dynamic cargo, cargo, I leave it as it is. I haven't messed with that too much. Now let's get into the mission here. The mission count. What this is, is the generator, campaign generator is gonna literally uh, piece together, in this case, five. You can do whatever number you wanna do here. And it's gonna spit out that many missions when it uh, generates this whole thing that are all gonna tie into each other. Uh, so we'll leave it at five for this one here mission difficulty here. Now, this is something that you're going to want to take into account here. It can be very overwhelming. Uh, so you don't want to get too discouraged here. So, you know, you'll know what level you're at here. Just pick something like I would pick steady, for example, here, like middle of the road, kind of average or whatever. If you really want to go kind of hard in the paint with it, go click harder or drop it down. It really is up to you on what kind of experience you want to have here. We'll leave it at steady for this. Now, the mission features uh we'll run through this really quickly here you can kind of add little elements to add more to the um immersion of this entire experience here so for enemy we can click like on uh, uh anti-air air bases ambient uh triple a ambient artillery we'll give them a wax we'll give them cast and ground and copters seeds ship structures tankers we're going to give them a little bit of everything. We want that air, you know, we want the everything to be going on there for a real immersive experience with everything uh, in these uh, campaign um, missions. Uh, same thing for our friendly size. We'll pick uh, anti-air, air, air FOBs, uh, ambient, AAA, and artillery. Artillery. I can't speak today. We'll pick some casts and ground and helicopters. We'll do some recovery tanker seeds. Uh, structures tech in for air bases and fobs scripts here we're going to also add in active ground units atis we'll add in uh skynet for both um and we'll leave that improvements here i usually haven't touched uh, actually added stronger splash damage which improves splash damage a secondary explosion simulates disabling effect can make helos more effective so uh that's kind of cool we'll add that in there uh, and then our direct support. This is going to be very important here because of these campaigns. We're, we are going to need additional uh, support from the AI, especially if you're flying solo. If you have friends, this, it's going to help a lot. But if you're solo dolo, you're going to need some of the stuff. So go in there and add bombers, cap, cast, helicopter, seed. Uh, you could even add transport helicopters. It really doesn't matter. Add it all. Why not? If you're in a big campaign, add it all. Just more uh assets for you to utilize next we have context here which i'm not going to select any of these for this campaign but if you hover over them they explain what each one of them does i think this is better suited for like uh the quick generator or something like that but for a campaign i'm gonna leave that off moving on to system we are going to add extra waypoints this is going to give us ingress and egress waypoints added to our route so i find that very useful we'll add that here uh and then for scenery here 
Uh, we're gonna you can add a, a few other things here if you want it for just more enhanced uh, experience here, like fire in the homes, fires in objective areas. You get the idea here. So you can add this uh, to whatever you want. Um, next, looking at objectives here. Now, all of these are defaulted on. These are all possible objectives when it generates these campaigns. So leave them all on. Uh, I don't see why you would want to turn any one of these off here. It gives you more variety of possible uh, missions and targets and so on and so forth. Here below that, we'll have the objective distance. Remember, this is what's going to... Um, set up how far you have to travel uh to your target location so if you're not trying to have to fly for like an hour in real time to get to your deep strike then lessen the maximum distance you know if you uh feel like 40 is uh too close for a minimum distance then bump that up to like 60 or something like that so you can toy around with this to set the distance min maxes uh, from where you take off to where you need to go so that you're not flying all day or that it's not too short and the mission is like too quick. So tinker around with that and see what uh, suits you best. All right, now we'll go down to objective count and what this is gonna do here is account for how many of the objectives are gonna be within the mission or the campaign here. So I, I would just leave it at average. You, you don't wanna have so many that it's it's overbearing and you don't want too few that it's like too easy. So just put a middle and average uh, here for the target count. I'll leave it at average as well. Again, what this is gonna do is once you get to your objective, how many targets within that area do you need to take out? You know, is it one building or is it five buildings? Is it uh, two tanks or 10 tanks, you get the idea here. You can toy around with this. And I think this would probably be the area perhaps where I might want to bump it up a little bit, maybe get a little more targets on there. So if it's a deep strike on a facility, yeah, maybe there's like four buildings versus one that I can drop bombs on. So if I were to change anything, it would be the uh, target count here. Uh, and then the uh, objective variation distance, if there was more than one objective, you know, how far do you want them to be apart from each other is essentially what this is here. Uh, again, I would leave it at average, or if you want something a little bit closer to each other, then go to low. You get the idea. We'll leave it at low for now for this one. Let's get into the next tab here for the situation. Now, this is what's going to um, set up a lot more of the difficulty in the campaign for you. As you can see here, combat proficiency, uh, proficiency for the enemy, you can randomize it. You might get someone, the, uh, the AI that is uh, pretty basic and doesn't do too much. And then you got like those ace god tier uh, undefeatable AI in here as well when you go very high. So be mindful of that. Um, if you want a little middle of the road, then just go average. Again, this is really predicated on how uh, skilled you are in your aircraft and in DCS. So play around with that. Um, if it's too hard, it's not going to make you want to fly this stuff. So uh, keep it in the middle of the road, I guess. Uh, Anti-aircraft strength. Again, same concept here. You just go, go through them and select the lo difficulty level for each of these uh, main three that you're going to be facing here. Uh, you can also do the same thing for your friendly. So what I would suggest is whatever you decide to do, keep it the same for both so that it's a little bit more even keel there for um, just an overall better experience. All right, don't 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 cheat code it and go very high for friendlies and then like very low for enemies. You're gonna cheese the whole experience. Moving on to combined arms. Here you get to select how many commanders there and your JTEX, which I do and I will add. I'll just add like two there, two there, um, in case you want to do something with JTEX. We'll move along to options. Here you get to select fog of war. We're gonna select all for this. Uh, I want more of that experience here. Next we'll have mission options here. And what we'll do here, um, I will do auto end mission. So that after a period of time, it will end the mission. Uh, we'll also add the JTAC single laser code here. We're gonna add that. Uh, we're gonna do no BDA. I want more of a real simulated. I don't want anything popping up on the screen. I need to visually confirm. Uh, my strikes and all of that. That's just what I prefer. Um, let's see here. You can add a no front line if you don't want to. What else do we want to add here? We'll also add end mission on command so you can end it sooner with a command. And then they do have a JTAC FC3 laser code here for those that are using any of the FC3 
modules uh, for laser code. So that's pretty convenient there. So you haven't forgot about you guys as well. Uh, we'll go down to realism options here. You could add bird strikes if you really want that to be involved. That's funny that they have it in there. You know, uh, you can hide labels, which I, I think I like. Um, we'll see. We'll also do if you really want to go again, really tough in it. No external views. Uh, what else we might do? You might want to do random failures. I not really want to do that, but I would leave most of the other stuff here, uh, checked on and go from there for the realism options. And then finally we have unit mods right here. Now what's cool about this is you can add some of these mods into the generator here to be used, but you have to already have these on your system from my understanding. So for example, like I have the super Herc mod, uh, since I fly in gray flag, so that's required for that uh, server. So if I were to go ahead and click on it, meaning the generator will include this this mod into the campaign at some point, um, that's that's great. Uh, if you don't have any of these assets, if you hover over any one of them, it gives you links to where you can find them at. So you'll just come down here. We'll highlight this whole line of link. Right click, copy, and then we'll just open up this right here and you'll see here it takes us right to where it's at to download it and install it onto your computer to utilize for the campaign very intuitive double thumbs up for this one this is really cool finally in our last tab here the unit ban list if there is something that you absolutely hate having to deal with maybe it's a specific sam site or a specific AAA whatever it may be uh if it's the bane of your existence you can ban it from being utilized in the campaign so you don't have to deal with it why would you want to do that i don't know but if you want to cheese it a little bit you can go through here it's pretty extensive and you know let's say all oh, screw f uh sa 15s well we could ban that out from being used all right i don't suggest doing that all right put your big boy pants on and uh go ahead and face it okay now that we've selected everything uh, we've gone through this all. We're going to hit generate. Okay. So we're here. It took about a minute and a half to generate this. Now keep in mind, unlike the quick generator, this one is generating five missions for a full campaign. So it took a little bit longer, nothing unreasonable. Here we are with operation silver fortune. Now you'll see here at the top, we have five tabs and we're going to take a look at each of these missions. So we click over to tab two and it's operation masterful spear three operation sharp orchid four is long hunt five is bright moon um i'm not going to go through in detail each of these five we'll just cover the first one here because you're going to get the idea here it's, it's all going to be kind of connected so um here's the briefing that for this first mission in the campaign uh, it's a four player mission because we set it up to be like that and again you can change all of this to suit your needs um theater sinai's situation six day war day two scattered clouds light breeze allies blah 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 description enemy attack aircraft have caused unacceptable losses on our armor all ground operations must be halted until these planes are out of commission concurrently merchant ships are used by the enemy to export goods to fuel the war effort command is convinced that destroying these ships will cripple the enemy war effort the boat and their cargo must be destroyed before they can uh unload it so that's the quick rundown now our tasks menu gives us a lot of information here a lot um primarily Disable all attack aircraft designated objective payday and then destroy the transport ship designated objective catman. Uh, if we come back up here and we go into the map, we'll kind of zoom in here um, and we'll see where are we at. Okay, here we're taking off from this base right here, which I can't tell what it is. And then it gives you your whole flight plan too. you know, ingress here. Uh, let's see, here's Catman down here, which is going to be the transport ship designated that we got to take out and then payday is attack the aircraft, which is going to be right over here. Uh, and so everything's all mapped out for us on this. Um, and then our remarks is going to give us more information there, right? Tech on beacon for the, uh, okay. Ra uh, Ramon air base. Um, and then we have information on SAM sites. Uh, what else do we have here? We also have access to seed. We also have access, uh, 
attack helicopters on standby. Marker code Hilo. Um, we've got Cass, we've got Cap, and we have a bomber wing available as well. Uh, and then we have fire support too, and we can use that for Artie. Uh, I've covered this in the prior video. I'll cover it again in this one on how to set these up to utilize those. These are going to be uh, very helpful, if not needed, uh, assets uh, to utilize in these uh, campaigns as well. Uh, finally, not sure why it said this on repeat, but uh, I've got the air bases on 227. Um, air bases and JTAC information, we have it here. Our flight groups gives us a full rundown of all of the aircraft that will be a part of this uh, mission within the campaign. We've, we know that our cast ships are going to be A-10s, F-4Es. we got F-18s, a part of it. we got uh, Hueys. We've got H-1Ws. Uh, you can see all the aircraft that are going to be involved in here, uh, which is really, really cool. Next, we'll go to Chevy 5. This is going to be the flight plan. This is tell, this tells us our waypoints, our ingress, payday, catman, egress, landing. That's our entire flight plan right there. And then on Uzi 7 flight plan, uh, I believe that's going to be the other two aircraft that we chose. So the flight uh, 5 is going to be the Harriers. Uh, or Chevy 5, and then Uzi 7 is going to be the other aircraft we selected at the beginning, which I believe were, uh, what do we select these? Oh, the TIE Fighters. Or TIE, I said TIE Fighters. Not Star Wars, sorry, Typhoons. Excuse me. <laughs> all right, so we've got all that information. And again, you can go through all of these here. We've got all the different missions all the way to 5. If we're ready to go, what we're going to do now is hit campaign to download it. Okay, now that it has downloaded the entire campaign, you're going to see it's a zip file that sends it to you in, okay? So it's an IMAP campaign deadly. We extract that, we get the folder, we open it up, and we'll have the five MIS files here for each of the missions. Now, it's probably kind of important, at least for me, I would want to fly these in the order in which they spit them out at. So the first one will be Operation Silver Fortune. So you might want to make a note of the order for these missions for the campaign to fly it in that way. I guess you could fly it anyway in which way you want to do it in whatever order but for me in the ocd i got to do it in order so that's how i'm going to do that uh i'll move these mis files over to where i keep all of my uh, uh mission files at and then we'll open up and load the first one which is going to be silver fortune into dcs and now that we are in let's take a look and see what we have for armament to complete the mission which the generator uh you know randomized and all of that and it looks like we have nothing but cluster bombs on here to take care of the ship and the enemy uh air which is i guess it's grounded it's on the ground so you just bomb and runs over them so that looks uh fine for, uh, for me you could always change this if you want to use something specific at this point you can change that out but this is what the generator has given us for the mission and i would uh, say you know challenge yourself and uh, use whatever they've given you to complete the mission uh the next thing we'll do here that we need to talk about and run you through is how to call for the various support that you're going to need to complete the mission yeah you might have some buddies with you but if you are flying this alone you're not gonna be able to do it by yourself you need some of the ai help with cast cap uh artillery uh stuff like that so the, in order to do this we're going to go to the uh f10 menu and what we're going to do here uh is we are going to start laying some points utilizing the uh mark label we're going to pull up our first one and let's see uh i think we're flying okay there's our first one down here and we've got payday over here so uh one thing we're going to need to do probably is call for uh seed probably down here somewhere as we get deep in so we're going to drop the uh, mark point we're going to type in seed into the box once we click off of it copy coordinates updated so we'll have that there uh we're also going to need some cap as well and because we have to kind of fly all the way down here i'd probably want to put some cap down closer to this area uh to support what we got going on so i'll drop this down here We'll type in CAP, C-A-P, click off. Copy. Coordinates updated. All right. Uh, what else do we have? We have close air support we can also utilize. Uh, why don't we get that and say, let's do that maybe over here? Why not? I'm just kind of winging it right now. So we'll do CAS. Copy. Coordinates updated. 
Uh, I think we have all of our bases covered for support. You need to have some type of uh, coordinates put in for them. Otherwise, if you don't do this, they will not respond whatsoever. You're going to get a message about uh, they need coordinates. So this is the first step you're going to want to do probably before you even take off from the ground. Once we're in the uh, aircraft is we're setting up here. Some of these assets you're going to want to send out there before you even leave the ground so they can clear the air, clear, clear the uh, 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 anti-air for you. So in order to do that, we're going to pull up our comms menu here. We're going to go to parent menu. We're going to go to other and we are going to go to mission. Now within mission, we can do a variety of things. We can do a begin the fire mission on the provided coordinates, which is gonna be the artillery. We can do begin the bombing run on the provided coordinates, which we haven't used. I forgot we have the bombers too. Uh, we won't utilize that. I think that might be a little too OP for what we're trying to do here. Uh, we can also begin cap on the provided coordinates uh, or we can do begin cast on the coordinates. We could do a helo attack on provided coordinates. I forgot we have a helo. Um, if you ever forget what kind of uh, what the uh, remarks that you have to put into the mark label are, just come to this menu and it shows you here. Cap, cast, helo, seed. Uh, the only one that is different is uh, for the artilleries, A-R-T-Y-R-D. Everything else, if we use helo, we could we could land a helo at a specific spot there. Seed. So we're gonna go ahead and launch the seed. Command requesting seed support. Affirmed. Seed support is on its way. And there they go. They've launched right here. We got some more Harriers, and it tells you their flight plan right here. So they're gonna go to about this point to do some seed coverage. Now, if we wanted to also call out and get. Uh, mission, let's get cap out there. Command, requesting cap support. So we'll do that. We'll go to the menu. Affirm, cap support is on its way. And already we've got F-18s rolling, which is perfect. Uh, if we wanted to continue this, and again, you can call this these units out, you know, right when you start or when you're in the air. Uh, when you're getting closer to an objective, you get the idea. It's really when you want to utilize them uh, when you're ready. Uh, the other thing we'll do is do closer support. Area is safe. You may begin your attack. So. Copy. Beginning my attack. We just called in some uh, S3Bs. So that is a rundown on how to use the campaign generator section of Briefing Room, which is a free app, highly I uh, recommend use it, utilizing it for yourself or your friends if you're trying to create some stuff and you're not the best mission uh, makers yourself. This is super intuitive, free, and just a great tool to enhance your DCS experience. A lot of repayability in this. It generates something different every time. You can really get in, in depth with it if you want or keep it real simple and go to the quick generator for something that just kicks something up quick for you to get into and get out of really quick so check it all out it's linked down below hopefully you guys enjoyed the video if you did make sure to like subscribe call sign grab me out